Beverly's been away and um, while I were, Beverly was away, I actually treated myself to a new kettle and uh, I've been rather shocked because I was just looking at the power consumption of the kettle and it's two and a half thousand, 2.5 to 3 kilowatts of ready electric. That's a heck of a lot of electricity and at 240 volts, that's actually 13 amps. And we only um, have, coming into the boat, 16 amps of electric. So uh, one of the things I should have really looked at is just my power consumption of the kettle. We've always known um, that we can't put the kettle on with other electrical stuff, which is one of the reasons that we've got one socket where we've got the kettle and the toaster because the toaster is 800 watts. So 3,800, we're over the limit of what this boat can supply in electricity. So one of the things we've done, like I say, is just have one socket that can only do either the kettle or the toaster, because there's no way that we can have both on this boat. In addition to um, making sure that we only have one socket for the two items that we have here. What we've done is um, we made sure that we bought the kettle with a white plug and the toaster with a black plug. That just means that when I look at the um, socket and the plug, I know exactly what on instrument it is in. At the moment it's white, so the kettle is in. If it's black, it's the toaster. So when it comes to um, the electrics, uh, the AC electrics in a marina, one thing you must always do is disconnect at the power socket first. Now we have our AC um, electrics running through a galvanic isolator. What that means is the um, uh, electrics on the boat are isolated and that's just a good thing to do for you and your boat. Another good tip when it comes to electrical cables is to run it on the off side. Basically, you do not want that electrical cable anywhere near where you can trip. It is a major trip hazard. <coughs> so I'm going to try and unconnect it and not far. Bring that up and down and then pull it backwards while you do it. Oh, there it is. <sighs> So one of the things that always makes me uh, ironic smile, shall we say, is that um, sockets, uh, which are always female, is where the power is. So it's female sockets have the power and it's the male plug that's going to take the power from the female socket. <laughs> The reason uh, you have a socket is that you don't have any live prongs. That is the worst thing you ever want. So one of the things that you should never do is um, put male plugs on both ends of a cable. That's what's called a widow maker. So just remember, males take the power, sockets deliver power. The other thing that you should always make sure is when you're using um, anything outside it needs to be rated to IP44 or above. That's just basically how watertight it needs to be. So that's just something you need to consider. So um, because you're uh, on a boat you've got limited power. Um, in the marina you've got 16 amps um, to power all your devices. And if you do want to find out what happens when you've got more power uh, being trying to be fed into a video into your boat, then uh, watch in Pavidus's video. But let's put it put bluntly, trying to put 32 amps into 16 amps just does not go and is a bad news. Another great uh, little device that you might consider um, for your boat is uh, an AC uh, tester, especially if you're going to marinas that are um, in different places, because you can actually test uh, if they've got the uh, electrics wired correctly. And uh, we have actually seen um, the wiring uh, wrong in one place. But basically... If I put that 
what I would class the conventional way up are neutral and earth are the wrong way round. So we just have to remember then here we have to put our sockets in upside down. Sorry, plugs in upside down. So why does that happen on this particular socket or this particular boat? It's just on this one. We thought we, we basically have got the neutral and the earth wired backwards on that particular socket. We? Well, we didn't put it in. <laughs> it was the previous owners or Bavaria. But because um, in um, European it doesn't matter so much, um, whereas um, UK it does matter. So, um, like I say, we just know that we have to put our socket, our plugs in that way up for that one socket. But um, no, it's very useful this little device because um, it just tests the electrics that you're going to take from, and at least that way you know exactly what's happening in these situations. So one of the things that we've done um, when we're out cruising is we've got a very, very small inverter. So that means we've got even less power coming into the boat than we do when we're in a marina. So how do we actually manage? And the one thing that we always do is we buy things which can either run on DC or doesn't use electricity at all. So our food processor is uh, a little choppy and uh, that's our food processor whereas we also have a manual coffee grinder so you've just got to remember you're on a boat you are not in a fully fledged house you have to get rid of all these ideas you know, you have a gas cooker rather than an electrical cooker. You don't have a washing machine. You don't have a um, dishwasher. You know, even with the toaster, we can't have the toaster and the kettle running at the same time. And that's even when we're on shore power. You know, there's so much stuff that you just have to think of other ways of not using electrical power. Because you just don't have it. And when you're out cruising, you have even less. So when you're out cruising, one of the things that you really need to think about is efficiency. Now, it's just a lot more efficient to use a DC to DC converter. This is our DC to DC converter for our laptop. Just look at the size of it in comparison to the AC to DC converter that we have. You know, this is a lot smaller so it's not going to be using anywhere near the power requirements of this. Also, you've got to think about the fact that you're going from DC to AC and then AC back down to DC. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to realise that's very inefficient. Whereas a DC to DC converter, you're only going one conversion, much more efficient. One of the advantages of having a small inverter is that we do not need massive battery banks on this boat. And it's also one of the reasons that we have minimised our use of high, high amperage kitchen appliances. It's why we don't have an electric coffee grinder, we don't have a bread maker, we don't have an air fryer and so on and so on. We don't have an electric battery plate because if we did all that, we would have to upgrade massively. The two batteries we have are lead acid. They're 180 amp hours, uh, two of them. So we get about 180 amp hours out of them in total because you get about half your battery capacity with a lead acid battery. One of the reasons that we haven't converted over to lithium is cost and inconvenience. Actually, that's two reasons, but there you go. You get twice as many for the same price. So these lead acid batteries were installed in May 2019 and they're now five years old because it's now coming up to May 2024. They have a two year guarantee. They're still working very nicely five years later. So we feel happy about that. The lithium batteries we have all seen have a five year guarantee. Um, so on the same basis, maybe you get two and a half times as long out of them. So five years times two and a half would give you about 12 and a bit. So if you start doing the arithmetic in terms of cost, if I had to replace these every 12 and a half years or sorry if I had to go through a 12 and a half year cycle on these and replace them the cost of these would be a lot less than having to replace the lithiums all the time 
the, the costs just don't add up for us. Because we are a low amperage boat, we don't need a massive battery bank and we don't need massive reserves so we can get by on lead acid and for us it works. One of the reasons we don't need the theme on the boat is because of our solar panels. Now they cost us something similar to what the lithium would cost us. When I've looked at lithium the best quote I have seen for lithium for this boat that would do the job is about 1100 1200 pounds and we spent about a thousand on this by the time you look at the steel work and the panels themselves. Now, some of the other quotes I've seen for lithiums are up to like 2,000. It's a lot of money. But these give us power every single day. Even in overcast weather, we get plenty of power off these. And they keep those batteries down below topped up. We consider these to be our better investment than just going out and getting a set of batteries and, and hoping, for the, hoping that the batteries will get through the night or get through bad weather. We have been in all sorts of weather and these have provided all the power we have needed on the boat. To be honest, given the prices of the lithium and the fact that we find it very difficult to make the arithmetic work for us, a better investment from our point of view would be to buy more of these or make these a bit bigger. And that's probably what we'll do at some point. We'll maybe just get, these are a total of 300 watts and we get nearly 300 watts out of them because they're on a surface that keep them nice and cool. These panels don't overheat. So we get a huge amount of solar power out of them. But we might take them up to 400 watts. It's a 30% increase. And to my mind, that would be a better investment than expensive batteries that are a bit temperamental, have been prone to fail, and cause all sorts of problems and upgrade costs. So we'd rather go with more of these. And of course, the kicker. <laughs> you spend all that money on lithium. You still need to spend the money on panels or a wind turbine or something because Lithium batteries do not charge themselves. Some mysterious force in the universe does not flow into them and create electrons. It doesn't work that way. You've still got to charge them up, and that means a charging circuit. So you're either running your engine, you're running a wind turbine, or you're running solar panels. And one of the things about lithium is they do drink charge. So you might possibly have to upgrade these, upgrade all the cabling to them, upgrade the MPPT controller. It's a lot. If you're going to do it, it's going to be a massive project. You're going to have a big spend. That's just the way of it. I mean, to be fair, it's boats. You always have a big spend. B-O-A-T, bring out another thousand. You know, we try and bring out as few thousands as possible. It's just the way we operate. Those are some of the reasons we don't go to lithium. But the other thing that we have done to prolong the life of our batteries is how we have set those batteries up and how we use those batteries. I've already talked about the low amperage stuff. But one of the other ways that we keep these batteries in good condition is how we have connected them up to the charging circuits. Um, I see an awful lot of people run all their charging circuits to one battery and they then get a couple of leads and connect it up to the other battery and they think that'll, that'll work, that'll charge it. And they're right, it will. However, the battery you're connected to gets most of the charge. This one here is the, the Johnny come lately. When that one's full up, this one starts to get charged. If you turn things off before this one's fully charged, it never fully charges. So it's not a good way to connect your battery up. What we've done instead is we've connected the batteries so that the positive charging circuits are on this battery and the negative charging circuits are on that battery and there's one cable between them. That way all the charge coming off the solar panels or coming out of the, M of the um, MPPT charger that connects us to the shore charge has to fill both batteries at the same time. Both batteries get a good charge. Um, our alternator, we've left the original circuit in, the alternator will charge that battery, but most of the time in this boat, we're not using the alternator to charge the batteries, so it's not an issue. So the batteries, the way we have wired them up, helps preserve their lifetime. The next thing that you can do to preserve your battery's lifetime if you're on lead acid is don't drain them below 50% voltage. Now you can get little cards that show this, they show you what voltage you can go down to, but reducing them down below 50%, charging them back up again, is called a cycle. And these batteries come with a couple of hundred or a couple of thousand cycles. It'll be written on the battery somewhere. And every time you do that cycle and, and break that lower barrier at 50%, the battery gets a little bit more sulfur on the plates and it begins to become less effective. If you keep your batteries fully charged up as much as you can, the cycles are a lot smaller and you get less sulfation on the plates. Your batteries last a lot longer. And that's what we do. Our solar panels keep these charged all the time. They very rarely get any great depth of just charge down. They never get near 50% discharge. It just doesn't happen. So because of all that, because we only need to get through the night with these batteries, because the next morning the solar is charging them back up again, we don't need thousands of amp bars. 
We don't have an electric engine. We don't have an electric hob. We don't use an electric kettle at sea. You know, all that sort of thing, it counts. And that's the reason that we have not gone lithium and we don't intend to at this stage. Your vision in red. I know. So the only other thing that I want to add is if you do want to know more about boat electrics, um, then I really do recommend uh, this book. Um, it's Electrics Simplified. And the reason I want to recommend this one is it gets to the point very quickly. Uh, there are other books out there, but they are just so complicated. It's like, I've got a degree in electrical and electronic engineering, and at the end of the day, I want a simple life, I want to find out the information, and I want to get on with the job. The only issue I have with it is it's got American wire gauge, and um, obviously when you're in a metric area, that's not so great. But that's the only issue.